Okay, so yesterday we looked at solving one-step equations using addition and subtraction. Okay, what are the other two operations that we have besides add and subtract? Multiply and divide. So previously we used addition and subtraction. Today we're going to solve equations using two other operations. Multiplying and dividing. So this is... This is what we're going to do. Again, guys, just like yesterday, all right? Mr. Hager's going to go over the big idea, how to do things, and then we're going to add, we're going to add the next piece to your sheet. All right, so this stuff, just listen. Don't worry about getting it down, just listen. That doesn't mean have your feet turned sideways, be turned around, talking to the person behind you. That means you actually listen. Okay, so the first property that we're going to go over is the multiplication property of equality. What that says is you're allowed to take both sides of an equation and multiply the same number on both sides. There's only one number you're not allowed to multiply each side by. Does anybody know what number that is? One. One is okay. It won't change it. Zero. If you multiply both sides by zero, what that does is it wipes out the equation. You end up with zero on the left, zero on the right, there's nothing left. Okay, so you can multiply both sides of an equation by any number except zero, and it gives you an equation that's equivalent. What does that say? It says you can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number. Okay, because I didn't see an equation. Um, okay, so here's an, ex an example. Say x equals 3. Okay. If I multiply each side by 2, I get 2x, and then if I multiply the right side by 2, I get 6. What would be the answer to this bottom equation? 2 times what is 6? 3. Okay. So that top equation and bottom equation, these are the exact same equation. They're what we call equivalent. As long as you do the same things on both sides, it doesn't change the answer to the problem. Any question on that? We're going to go through some examples practicing multiplying each side by numbers, and we'll also do some that have fractions. Okay, let's suppose we had something like, like this. Okay, this is another example that we would use multiplication to solve, and Mr. Roy is going to go through an example, just I think, just like that. So I'm not going to go through all the steps to solve it, but I'm just going to explain what you'd have to do, and he'll show you. Okay, if you've got a fraction in front of x, to get x alone, there's two numbers you need to get on the other side, the 3 and the 2. We can move them both at the same time using something we learned yesterday, the reciprocal. Okay. If you've got a fraction in front of a variable, the way you get rid of the fraction is to multiply both sides. That's the property I just taught you. Multiply both sides by something special. In this case, the reciprocal. Okay. What's the reciprocal of 3 over 2? 2 thirds. Okay. So when you multiply each side by 2 thirds, what happens when you have the same number in the top and the bottom and you're multiplying fractions? That reduces, it cancels out. What about the threes? They cancel out, reduce to one. Now you just have to do out your arithmetic. Six times two divided by three. Okay, but we're gonna go through a whole example and show all the steps. But that's one way to use the multiplication property. Okay. Just to make sure you guys know what a reciprocal is, let's try a couple. What's the reciprocal of five over two? two Say about Two fifths. What's the reciprocal of negative three-fourths? Clayton? Negative four-thirds. Negative four-thirds. Good. What's the reciprocal of two divided by, that's an A. Two divided by A. Yeah, a little tricky now. We got a letter in there. Katie? Yeah, A over two. A over two. Doesn't matter what it is. You just flip it. Whatever's there, you flip it. Okay. What's the reciprocal of... 
B divided by C. Spencer? C over B. C divided by B. Flip it. Okay, most of the time you guys aren't going to be working with letters. You're going to have numbers. Any question on what a reciprocal is? All right. So now Mr. Roy is going to go through an actual example where you use the multiplication property. Yeah, this is going to go on, this is going to go on the sheet, guys. Okay, guys. So on your sheet, just like yesterday, in the little EX box, I want you to write in, just like I have you, right in that box, right in the box on that sheet. Right, I want you to write in negative three over two x equals fourteen. Is your notes? No, right here, bud. It should be. It should be in the box under one step equations, multiplying or dividing. I know some of you guys don't have your sheets today, so it's going to go right there. All right, so, just like we did yesterday. So the first thing we're going to do is, all right, we're going to identify, not the hashtag, but identify the number. Usually in this case, if you're, do, if you're doing with fractions, all right, it's, I mean, if you're doing um, with multiplication, you're going to start with division, right? So you're going to identify a number, possibly a fraction, with the value. You might call it, it might be called like a coefficient too. All right, so we want to identify that first. Guys, okay, make sure it's going on the one step equations, multiplying or dividing. And most of you guys have that. And scroll down, guys. If you didn't get this, it's still going to be up there. It's not going anywhere. Don't panic. <coughs> so here it is again, right? Who can tell me what my, by raising your hand, who can tell me what my coefficient is or my number with the variable? Kayla? Um, negative 2 over 3. Negative 2 over 3, negative, not that, oh, not, no, all, 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 all word was what's attached to the x. So it's going to be negative 2 over 3. Don't count the x, but just want the number attached to it, or the coefficient. So I'm going to rewrite that in my notes, and I'm going to circle what the coefficient is, or right, the number attached to the variable. Guys, we don't have that part yet. I'll still leave it up there so you can see it. Now, this seems, this seems like a long step, but again, I want to, I want you guys to be able to understand it. All right. So for step two, right after we after we've identified the coefficient, we're going to use the reciprocal. If you forget that what that is, is it's the fraction flipped. If it's negative, it stays negative. If it's positive, it stays it stays positive. We don't change that. All right, so we're going to use the reciprocal and do the opposite operation, which in this case is going to be, because this is a fraction of division problem, it's going to be multiplication. We're going to do it on both sides of the equal sign, right, by that fraction that's attached to the x or the coefficient. my problem again. 
we already said my coefficient, all right, is negative 2 over 3. That's my coefficient. My next step says, so in step 2, right, what am I going to do now? You can tell me. What am I going to do right now? Somebody I haven't heard from you. Go ahead, Chelsea. And what do we call that? When we, when we, flip, when we flip the reciprocal, right? And am I going to, what, kind of what kind of a math operation is this, Chelsea? Huh? Division. So to get rid of it, I have to do, do the opposite thing, right? So I'm going to multiply by, it's still going to stay negative. Like we said, we don't change that. It's still going to be negative. And the reciprocal um, for this, Sam, what's the reciprocal of this going to be? 3 over negative 2, the whole thing, the whole thing's negative, right? So this whole thing, this whole thing, this cancels, that cancels, that cancels, that, can, that cancels, the whole thing cancels out. Where, what else do I have to do? Katie? Multiply with 14 by 2 Nice, good catch. Multiply this by negative 3 over 2. All right, so I can just multiply, you can do this Probably the easiest way, guys, is to multiply straight across. Just go from there, from there, right? So this is going to equal, first off, answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative, right? Because we're doing a positive times a negative. It's a negative. If I do 14 times 3, I'm going to get 42. On the bottom, I just leave the 2. Now, am I done with this? No. No. What's it going to become? Yeah. You know what that whole number is going to be, Savon? You're right on. Awesome, good catch. Negative 21. So I, I can just multiply. If that's easy for people, that's fine. You can also, I don't want to screw people up. If I go up here, you don't have to write this down if you don't want to. Here's my 14. Here's my negative 3 over 2. We talked about this before. How can I make 14 a fraction? Put it over 1, right? I look, okay, I got 2 on the bottom here. I obviously know 2 goes into itself. Does 2 go into 14? No. So how many times does 2 go into 2? Once. How many times does 2 go into 14? 7. 7 times. Now I can multiply across. 7 times negative 3? 21 over 1, which is really 21. So if you, feel, if you feel comfortable doing that way, do it that way. If you feel comfortable doing it this way, do it that way. This, this is like eliminating a step, that's all. Again, do it either way that you want, okay? So, I do that. Here's my equal sign from the original thing, from the original problem. On this side, the equal sign, what's going to be left? Just x, right? I canceled. That's why I did that. I didn't do all that work for nothing. I want to get x by itself or the variable by itself. x on this side, negative 21. Is your final answer. Done. All right? So again, we get identi identify a number that's attached to the variable, the coefficient. Reciprocal, do it on both sides. Done. All right? All right, so this is actually the harder one to do when you have to do the fraction. What, we're gonna, what I'm going to do here is start out with one that's even easier. Okay, I'm going to go through this one with you because it's a little different than having a fraction in front, but you're still going to use that property where you multiply both sides by a number. Okay, so look at the left-hand side. What, what operation is being done on the left-hand side? Division. division. Okay, what did Mr. Roy say the operation that's the opposite of division? Multiplication. Multiplication. Okay, so what we have to do, we've got x divided by 4. We have to undo dividing by 4. So you already told me it was multiplication. 
But what are you going to multiply to get rid of dividing by 4? Four. Four. You can multiply by 4 on the left. What about on the right? Four. 4. What happens if you take a number and divide by 4 and multiply by 4? What, what happens? It cancels each other out. What's the only thing that's on the left-hand side now? Yep. But why did you get, how did you get four? Is that like you take the denominator and multiply it? Yeah, you multiply by the denominator. Okay. So it's x uh, yep. just a variable. It's not a whole number. Right. You just multiply by the denominator. That's it. Okay, and that cancels out division. Fours cancel out. What do you get on the left-hand side now? What's all that's left? Negative 28. Okay, that's going to be on the right. What's on the left? And that's it. Any question on getting that? How do you check if negative 28 is right? 28 over 4. Yeah. Plug it back into the original problem. So we check, is negative 28 divided by 4? Does that come out to negative 7? Negative 28 divided by 4. What do you think, Savon? Yes. Yeah. That's negative 7. Does negative 7 equal negative 7? Yep. Then we got it right. Okay? That's how you check your answer. Okay, so why don't you guys try those two on your own? Okay, Mr. Roy and I will walk around and help you out, but give those two a try. Okay, so let's start with example 1B. What operation are we doing on the left hand side? What operation right now is being done on the left? Division. How are we going to undo division? Multiplication. Multiplication. So you've divided x by negative 2. How would you undo that? Multiply it by negative 2. And multiply this side by negative 2. What happens when you have, if you want to think of it as a fraction, you have negative 2 in the top and the bottom. They cancel out. What's on the left hand side now? Just x. And what's 15 times negative 2? Negative 30. Okay, let's check it. How do we check it? Take our answer and... What are the x ones? So we have negative 30 divided by negative 2. Does negative 30 divide by negative 2 equal positive 15? Yes, it does. That's how you check it. If negative 30 divided by negative 2 didn't equal 15, then we had a mistake. Okay, next one we'll just solve. We're not going to check it. How do we get y by itself here? Kayla? Times by 5. Times by 5? Times by 5. What happens to the 5's on the right? They cancel out. What's 5 times 3? 5. 5 times 3? 15. 15? Equals y. Now, what could you have done if you didn't like the y on the right to start? You could have switched it. You could have switched what was on each side to start. Okay. Any questions on solving a one-step equation using multiplication? Okay. Let's try one with a fraction, like Mr. Roy did. 9 equals 3 fourths x. Okay. This fraction, 3 fourths, that's division. What are you going to do on each side? Which operation? Multiply. multiply. What are you going to multiply each side by? The reciprocal. Yep, reciprocal. What's the reciprocal? Four over, three. Four over three. Four over three. Four over three. What happens to the fours on the right hand side? What happens to the threes on the right hand side? Yep. Well, how can you think of 9 as a fraction if, if that's confusing? Okay. What's 4 times 9? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. And then in the bottom, what do you have there? 
Can 36 be divided by 3? Yeah, that's what, uh, 12. Okay. Again, what could you have done in this problem if you weren't comfortable the way it was set up where the variable was? Well, you could have switched. I was going to say yep. the ending part, you can go from 3 goes into 9 once, and then the 9 changes the 3. Yep, you could also reduce your fraction before you multiply if you want. That's fine. Any questions on that one? Anybody think they need to see another one where you have a fraction in front of the variable? Everyone's okay when you have the ones where it's just divided by a number. Okay, so that's how you solve equations with multiplication. Okay, our last property we're going to look at is solving equations using division. Again, guys, so on that other block, on the box on the other side, right? Again, just like we did with the um, with the multiplication ones, all right? Mr. Hager is going to give you the overview of what it's all about. I'll come up, give you the steps, add the steps to your sheet. Don't add this stuff to your sheet. All right? What it's going over, it's just going over to show you. Now I'll get up on the board. When I write on the board, you write on your sheet. Okay, so the division property basically says, just like we've been saying all along, you can add the same number to both sides. You can subtract the same number from both sides. You can multiply both sides by the same number. Well, you can also divide both sides by the same number. Any number you want, except what number are you not allowed to divide by? Zero. Zero. Remember, a number divided by zero spells no. You can't divide by zero. Okay? And if you divide both sides by the same thing, that produces an equivalent equation. So here's an example. If I had the equation x equals 8, okay? and let's say I wanted to create a problem on the test where 8 was the answer. Okay? I might start out like that. Divide each side by 2 and get x divided by 2 equals 4. Okay? What's the answer to this Bottom equation. We know how to solve that from what we just did before. Yep? Uh, 8 over 2. 8. Yeah. Oh. X is 8. Exactly. What was the answer to this top equation? 8. These equations have the same answer. That means they are equivalent. So dividing each side by 2 didn't change the answer to the equation. Okay? Any question on that? All right, so Mr. Roy is going to go through an example of when you use the division property of equality. Okay. His example starts out with 6x equals 12. So guys, in that, in that box on the other side, I don't want me to spell in, the little box, the example box, right, 6x equals 12. step equations, multiplication or division, you already have one side of that box filled in. Now we're on the other side. All right? So, almost done, guys. Last stuff you got to write for today right here. Just like we did with the other one. All right? Identify the number with the variable. Can we just write same? You can write same. Yeah. Thank you. Identify the number with the variable, also known as the what? What do we call that number with the variable? It starts with a C. Coefficient, right? So again, if you want to write same, that's fine. Okay, you can do that. Letter? Letter. Letter. You make it fun of my hand right now? Yes, yes. All right, here we go. So again, in this one, Justin, in this one, what's my coefficient? Six. six. Thanks, man. So rewrite it. Boom. Circle six. Six is your coefficient. 
just like just like we did when we did them by solving by multiplication. Now, most people are probably going to know this. This, the coefficient next to the variable. What does that mean? What kind of math operation? Raise your hand and tell me, Savant. Um, multiplication. Multiplication, right? So, do you, how are we going to solve an equation with multiplication like this in it? What are we going to do, Savant? Uh, to solve this, <laughs> what kind of math? You're waving your hands. I don't know. Well, You're shaking, like you just don't care. All right. <laughs> to solve to solve that, what am I going to do? Division. Use the again opposite operation. Here we go now. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. I know. I'm, I'm mean. I'm going for I'm going for meanest teacher of the year. All right. So number with variable, also known as coefficient. We know the number with the variable next to it means multiplication. All right. Dr. Hughes just told us that. So we're going to do the opposite operation, which again Dr. Hughes just told us. Is Dr. Hughes. Hughes. Save on Hughes, Dr. Hughes. You didn't I'm know that? You are in my book. All right. Number with variable next to it means multiplication. We already talked about that. So does so do the opposite operation, which is division, all right, on both sides of the equal sign by the number attached. AKA coefficient. Write it down. I know. I mean Guys, for the sake of time, it's going to move up a little bit more. All right? So here's my, here's my problem. Like you already said, all right, 6 is the coefficient. All right? So I got 6x equals 12. All right? So we want to do division, right? What do we want to divide by? Who can tell me? Say Vaughn. Um, six. Divide by six, right? Because it's a number attached to x. All right? So divide by six here. Divide by six here. Somebody raise their hand and tell me. What's left on? Here's my equal sign. What's left on this side? X. X. On the other side, everybody? Bingo. Bingo. All right, so we'll, um, we'll try maybe two more of those, and then I want to try one word problem with you guys that we didn't get to from yesterday. Okay, 3x equals 18. How do you figure out if you should multiply or divide here? How do you know? Yeah, Dominic? And what does that mean when the 3 is next to the variable? You're multiplying. How do you undo this multiplication? Exactly. You're going to divide each side by 3. What's 3 divided by 3? What happens? They cancel out. What's on the left-hand side now? Just x. What's 18 divided by 3? Go ahead, Marcus. Six. X equals six. Okay, I'm not going to check them all, but I'll, we'll just check the first one. Make sure you know how you do it. What do you do with the six? Guys, check don't, it. Don't stop packing up there. We still have like nine minutes, and we'll do a couple of practice problems. Believe me, you'll have plenty of time to leave. Don't worry. Okay, so we plug it in to check it. So we're going to check this 3 times 6. Does that equal 18? Yes. Yes, it does. What does that mean? 
18. And that means that our answer is? 18. Our answer is 6, but it means our answer is correct. We did the problem right. Let's try this one. Negative 6x equals 42. What operation are we going to do on both sides here? Division. Division. What are we going to divide by this time? Negative six. negative 6. We want to cancel the negative and the 6. What about on the right-hand side? Negative, negative 6. What happens with negative 6 divided by negative 6? Cancels. Yeah, the number cancels, the negatives cancel. Anything on the right-hand side I can cancel? No. Negative, negative oh. divided by negative is what? Positive. Positive. And what's 42 divided by 6? Yep. Seven. Seven. Very good. Okay, we're not going to check it. We already showed you how to check it. We're just going to get through this one. Okay, let's try one more. 18 equals 5x. So you've got a couple choices. If you don't like the variable on the right, switch it. If you're okay with the variable on the right, just solve it the way it is. Okay, so what would be our first step? Spencer? So you're, what are you doing to each side? Dividing by 5. What's 5 divided by 5? 1. Not, not, not 0, 1. It cancels out. What's on the right-hand side now? Just x. Does 5 go into 18? No. Nope. Just leave, leave your answer as a fraction. You don't have to find a decimal. That's it. Any questions before we do the last, last couple? OK. So in math, when you see the word of, OK, when you're doing a word problem, the word of means multiply. OK? Of means multiply. Okay. Let's say that there were. 20 students in the class. And I said, I want to know what half of the class is. Half of 20. Half of 20. That'd be 10 students. You do multiplication when you see the word of. That's important. Any question on that? Of means multiply. OK, let's go through. <coughs> Okay, I'll go through this one with you guys to show you what one you're going to have like this in the homework. But if you have this one, the one in the homework is very similar. It says, Joe ran three miles. Joe ran two-fifths of. Okay, we see that word of. Multiplication is going to come up here. Two-fifths of the distance Mike ran. How far did Mike run? Okay, let's, let's look at it step by step. How many miles did Joe run? Three miles. He ran three miles. So the distance, just writing it a little bit differently, the distance Joe ran is three-fifths of whose distance? Joe ran three-fifths of the distance of Mike. The distance Joe ran is three-fifths of Mike's distance. Okay, and the reason I wrote it like that is because I wanted to show you what's important here. Distance Joe ran, that's important. Is, that's important. Three-fifths of Mike's distance. So each part we just underline. We're going to translate that to an equation step by step. Distance Joe ran. Do we know that? Three miles. The distance Joe ran is three miles. What about the word is in math? What does that mean? Uh, Think. Right. Oh, Wait, no, multiply. Wait, no. No, what's up? X is six. Equals. Equals. Uh, when you say X is six, is means equals. 
Okay, so you guys have been doing that all along. So is means equals. Three fifths. That's just what? Three fifths is just a. It's a fraction. Yeah, it's just a fraction, just a number. So we just write that down. What does of mean? Multiply. What's Mike's distance? X or M. That's the question. How far did Mike run? We don't know. Okay. What's a good letter you could pick for Mike's distance? M. Now we just took our word problem. We changed it into an equation. Now we should be able to solve it. How do you get rid of this 3 fifths? That's a fraction in front of a variable. Yep. Um, multiply it. Multiply by? 5 over 3. And 5 over 3. Okay. What happens on the right hand side? What happens to the 5's? Cancels. What happens to the 3's? Cancels. What's the only thing on the right hand side now? Just M. What's 5 times 3? 15. What goes in the bottom? 3. Guys, how many? How many miles did Mike run? What's fifteen divided by three? Five. Five miles. Okay. When we ask you a problem on the test, guys, listen. Whenever you do a word problem, make sure you put a label on it. In this case, it's how far did Mike run? It's five. Miles. Okay? Okay, so you're going to have a couple word problems just like that in the homework. Okay, so the homework tonight on page 96 is 1 through 31 odd.